Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. So I picked up the game after not having played for nearly two years. And aside from the Noel I'm given from the Beginner's Wish banner, the first character I've ever pulled on this new run was an off-banner Cookie Shinobu. Having loved her design, I decided to look into what she has to offer for my team, only to find out that she's not exactly the best character. In fact, she's pretty bad. Like, really bad. But despite all the odds stacked against her, I decided I like Cookie's character enough to build her as a physical main DPS because, well, this is what you do with bad characters you happen to really like. And you know, her normal attack animations do look pretty cool too. Would be a waste of animation if I used her like how any other sane person would. <sighs> My mind is completely blank. I continued playing the game in the most inefficient manner possible until I eventually discovered this little green thing that randomly appears when Shincho sticks his rain sword up a dendro slime's bum. I looked into this little phenomenon and, within the last two years of having not played Genshin Impact, I failed to realize that Mihoyo... Hoyoverse? Cognosphere? When did they change their name? Hoyo decided to add a completely new playable element in Dendro and, with its addition, an entire collection of new elemental reactions. And as you know, or don't know, elemental reactions practically make or break the game. Long gone on the days of Max Attack de Luke and Lisa Mon compilations. And upon doing more research, I realized Kuki Shinobu is not a bad character. In fact, she's pretty good. Like, really good. All the articles and comment threads I had read about Kuki previously were actually outdated. So now that I understand just how potent Kuki is as a character, I decided to further my investment to her and. Oh. Oh. She needs Nakui to ascend which you can only get from Inazuma. And because I pulled her off banner, there was no test run to do in order to ascend her at least once. Huh. So I picked up the game after not having played for nearly two years, and I'm running through an entirety of Monsan Leeway using a level 20 Kuki Shinobu. Against enemies that are at least like, level 40. Even when I play efficiently, I'm still forever suffering. But now allow me to tell you about the practice known as the Inazuman Sprint. The Inazuman Sprint is a series of challenges that reward you with a visa to travel to the titular nation of Inazuma. These challenges can range across a number of different activities such as preparing a dinner for the Deptai, fetching milk from the elusive Cocoa Goat, sinking the Jade Chamber into the ocean, assisting with the reconstruction of the Jade Chamber, fending off foes from distant lands, helping Zhang totally not Rex Lapis Lee go shopping, and sinking the newly constructed Jade Chamber into the ocean once more for good measure. And so once I managed to get my visa, I traveled alongside Ningguang's wife Beidou and the real animal archon Kazuha to enter the borders of anime Japan. So now that I'm in Izuma, I should be able to go find some Nakuweed in order to finally ascend Kuki. So now that I'm in Izuma, I should be able to farm the rest of the materials needed to ascend her further. What is this? Ruin Serpent? What in Raiden Shogun's Bazanga sword is a chasm? This wasn't a part of the Inazuma sprint. I did it. I finally did it. I finally managed to level Cookie beyond level 40. And despite how much I had suffered in order to reach this point, I did not regret a single second of my time with Genshin. I believe the reason why I had not enjoyed the game initially was because I had no goal in mind. Yes, you can go do the Archon quest. Yes, you can explore every nook and cranny of the world of Tavat. And yes, you can even become a master at Genius Invocation TCG. But given how barren the game was at launch, I had no motivation to continue playing as I knew the only thing to do at the time was play the long game. Do dailies and weeklies, grow all your characters, gather as many primo gems as possible, and just pray that whatever content comes in the future is worth your time. And yes, that content was worth it after these last two years. But even so, I still needed something to drive me to continue playing. I still needed something to stop myself from dropping the game like many other gacha games I've tried out. And this green haired ninja from anime Japan, known as Kuki Shinobu, drove me to do so. Cookie pushed me through the Archon quest to reach Inazuma. Cookie pushed me to do side content such as the Chasm. Cookie pushed me to experiment with random teams and see what would be the most fun to play. And somewhere along the way, I somehow ended up finding that fun that I wanted for so long from this silly anime gacha game. Is Genshin Impact the perfect gacha game? Yeah, no. I don't think there is such thing as a perfect gacha game, as gacha games in concept are always going to be anti-consumer no matter how free to play friendly some may make them out to be. And even then, I still have my issues with the game, such as how characters from Inazuma, like Kuki, are just impossible to build in the beginning due to the region being storylogged. But is Genshin Impact a fun gacha game? Yes. For me at least. There was a time when I didn't find the game fun, and only once I decided to dive deep into the game 
did I find that fun? But I can understand that many others don't feel that way. I didn't feel that way until recently. If there's one thing to take away from this video, just know that you can find fun in the littlest of things, even if those things can be arduous. And that was how I was able to love Genshin Impact. Now, let me tell you about how my boy, I'll hate them, got me to love Genshin Impact. Go assault through the sky!